Hi children, welcome to our boat craft. So for this week's craft and today's activity, you're going to need a carton. It could be a milk carton or mine is an orange juice one that you've hopefully washed out inside. And you're gonna need a pair of scissors because the first thing you're going to do is cut your carton in half so that it looks like this. And then bend out the front and the back so you get a nice boat shape, okay? And then the second thing we're gonna do is paint it. That's easy, isn't it? Now we're going to use acrylic paint to paint with because it's waterproof once it dries. And if you use poster paint, when we put it in the water, it will wash off. Don't worry if the paint doesn't cover everything. I had a little test before, you can see. And some of the writing still shows through. That's fine, we'll put another coat on tomorrow. All right. Right. I'm going to do the front of my boat. You don't obviously need to do the underneath bit because that bit will be in the water. That can stay whatever colour your carton is. And then we'll leave that to dry till tomorrow. Well done, everybody. Hi, children. Welcome to day two of our boat craft. So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to repaint our boat because remember the acrylic paint that we use doesn't cover all of the markings. We want a nice solid colour. So squeeze your paint out and then get painting on your boat. And this time you should really start seeing some good coverage. There you go, that's looking much better, isn't it? And then we just need to leave that, oops, to dry. Fantastic, well done. And now onto the second part that we need to do today. For the second part of our craft, I've used scissors and I've cut a strip of cardboard. Now you don't want it any deeper than your boat is, okay? Um, so my boat's a couple of inches deep and my cardboard is an inch or so thick. Then you'll need a kebab stick or a long stick of some sort, some PVA glue, of course, and a little bit of masking tape. Fab. Right, so put a little bit of PVA down your strip. Now this is going to be the bit that holds your mast of your ship. So put your pointy end of your kebab stick in here and then you want to roll your strip as tightly as you can and the glue will squelch out don't worry if you get it on your fingers and you're going to make a tight roll around the end of your kebab stick okay here we go we're nearly done and then when you've got to the end you want to just fasten that off with a little bit of masking tape and there's the foot of your mask now we're going to fit that into our boat so our boat is still drying, remember, so you've got to be careful not to touch the sides. And you want to put the mast about two thirds of the way back. So not right in the middle, a bit further back than that. So let's put a little blob of glue in. And then we're going to stick our mast there and it's going to stay overnight to dry. Awesome. Well done. Okay, welcome to day three of our boat craft. So for today, you're going to need another kebab stick. Um, and you're going to need, this is going to be your sail. Now your sail is going to be a square to begin with, but it needs to be, when you fold, fold it diagonally, diagonally, I can't say that, into a triangle, it needs to, there needs to be a little bit of kebab stick sticking out either end. So that's, that's how big you need it to be. Um, and then you need a little, that's white cotton, then you need a little bit of coloured fabric, any fabric that you like, something nice and bright, um, glue stick, and scissors, this is the fun bit, some thick thread and a needle. So you might need a grown up to help with the threading the needle bit, okay, but it will be very easy. Right, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is put glue down the middle, of your sail and pop your kebab stick in the middle and then you're going to put glue all over your sail on one side anyway and then fold the two halves together you are going to sew it but we want it to stay in place while we're sewing so let's fold that carefully over and then smooth it down making sure your kebab stick is stuck up in that bit there that's Going to give your sail the rigidity. Fantastic. Now, onto our first sewing bit. Bit I've threaded my needle up, doubled it over, and at the end, I've got a big knot. That's to hold. 
hold it in place. So you'll probably need your grown up to help you with that bit. Okay, now we're going to do a running stitch along the edge of our sail to hold it together. Doesn't matter how neat it looks, um, but that's what we're going to do. So the very first thing is you're going to choose a bit here, choose a little place near your kebab stick and stick it through the fabric and turn it over. And there's your, so your knot on the other side will hold it. And here you've got all your thread through. Now we're going to go along here. So you need to jump your needle along. So you're gonna do a boing along and stick it through. This is the important bit, turn it over when you pull it through. Okay, here we are again. We're going to jump our needle along, boing, stick it through and then turn it over. Oh, look at this. We've made a stitch and there's one on the other side as well. Okay, so the same thing, whoops, I'm knocking everything over. Same thing, boing your needle along, stick it through and turn it over. I'm making a little pattern now. Boing your needle along, stick your needle through, turn it over. Boing your needle along, boing, stick it through, turn your turn your sail over. We'll do one more here and then we'll turn the corner. So boing your needle along, stick it through. We're going to turn it over and you can see now that we've got a line of stitches. We're going to do another line along there and then we'll be finished. Okay, so this time we're going to turn the corner. So we're going to boing our needle along, stick it through here. And I've got right along to my kebab stick. So I'm just going to use my scissors to stick my thread off. And then you can tie, or you could get your grown up to do this, tie your threads onto your kebab stick. So do like a, especially if you've got long ends, I've left my ends a bit short, but you're going to tie it a bit like when you tie your shoelaces. Round once. Make sure you don't pull it too tight, it will affect your sail, and then tie it round. Do another one and that'll make a knot. There you go. Look at that, and you can leave those ends loose. That looks good, well done. Fantastic, ready for the next bit? Remember our nice little patch of fabric? We're going to get our glue stick and we're going to stick it on to our sail. Put it all over the, there you go. And then you can put it on any old towel because that's, we've got to pretend that our sail, sail is all worn out and we've had to put a patch on it. And that's why we've chosen a bright colour because it looks really nice against the white. And we're going to do the same sewing. Same needle again, and I've done a knot in the end so that when I stab it through into my patch, now this time we're going to do a line all the way around the edge of our patch. Okay, so we're going to choose a corner, poke it through. And then as we pull it through, turn it over. Now, when you get to this side, you can't see where the patch is going to be. But if you just hold it up a little bit to the light, you can see through. And then you can see where to boing your needle along. There you go. Turn it over. Pull it through. You know what to do now, don't you? Jump it along. Boing. Stick it through. And then you have to turn it over. Well done. We're going to do this. Remember when you get to here, you might need to lift it up a little bit to the light to see where to stick it through. Bring it along, stick it through. And my needle has now come up in a corner. Now we're going to do this all the way round the edge of our patch. Okay, round here, so I'm heading. Got to my corner where the knot is. So stick your needle in where the knot is, turn it over as we always do. And then you need to snip your thread off. And the best thing to do is to tie it round one of the other threads so if you thread it underneath. And then I've left my ends long this time, so it's much easier. Tie your knot, just like when you do your shoelaces, tie it round once. If you want to be extra careful, you could tie it three times. Pull it a little bit tight. And then you can either, you can leave your cords a bit long, you can cut them a bit short, don't cut them too short in case they come open. And your sail will look, on that side you can see the rough stitching. And on the other side, you can see your magnificent patch. That looks fantastic. And that is day three of the craft. Well done, I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, welcome to day four of my boat craft. 
Um, I have my boat from yesterday and I have the sail that we made. And I've got my scissors, scissors, needle and thread. Um, I've got my pliers for snipping some of the uh, wooden masks. I've got a hole punch. You could probably get by without this, see what you think. And then I've got some more of this brightly coloured fabric that we sewed you. We just need a tiny bit more of this. Um, I'll show you what we're going to do now. So we're going to fix our sail on like this. We're going to have to tie it onto the front of the boat and then we're going to put a little stitch in there to tie it onto the mast. First one, I'm going to snip that off with my pliers. Now you could probably do this with a decent pair of scissors. Okay, just to give it a nice straight end. And then I'm going to use my hole punch. I'm going to make a hole in the front of my boat. So this is why I said you could probably get by without it. You could just use a sharp pair of scissors to make this hole. But this is obviously safe, a safer way to do it. And then you need to thread your needle up again. So I've made a little hole here and I'm just going to thread the end of my mast through and it can just rest there. And then you just need to make sure that this bit is parallel with the mast and you're going to sew here. So you need to, and you might need a grown up to help with this bit. I've threaded up my needle and I've put a knot at the end again. Okay, and I'm going to push my needle through. And then I'm just going to do a few little stitches to hold it in place. And it will hold it on. Maybe three, we should be fine. Because gravity is kind of going to hold it in place anyway. I'm going to do, can you see it's holding beautifully now? I've only really done two. Perhaps just do one more to be on the safe side. And then I'm going to snip it and tie it. Okay. Whoops. Tie that round so it won't come off. Just like when you do your shoelace again. And one more time. And there is your little boat. We've got one more little bit to do. Okay. Right, for our next little bit, we're going to make a little bit of bunting that goes from here down to here. So you're going to need a piece of your thread that's long enough to stretch from here to the other bit of the boat like that but a little bit loose not too tight so you need a little bit of room and obviously leave a bit on the end as well for tying so just cut that there's a bit of thread and then i'm going to cut some little tiny rectangles and attach them to make some bunting and i'm also going to make a flag for the top right i'm cutting a little bit of fabric so your bunting flags They're going to be doubled over, so you want it to be about, so imagine like a little flag doubled over and then cut it into little tiny rectangles about that size. So just do a few of those. Not It doesn't have to go right along the, ed, the end, of, go right along the thread. I should have mentioned at the beginning you're going to need some glue because what you're going to do is put glue on your flag and we're not going to sew these we're just going to glue them because they're not really going to be flapping in the wind and then you're just going to fold it over like that and that is going to be your first little bit of bunting and then Gonna do another one, so leave a little gap, not too big of a gap, and then put your next one over, and then do that right along till we've used up. I've made seven little flags, and it should just stay stuck nicely on your bunting like this. Okay, so I've made my little bunting strip of bunting, and I fastened it on. I've made a little hole in the other end. And I've just tied it onto the end of my mask so you can see the little flags will stay there. And then I've also stuck another little flag on here exactly the same way, cut a diamond out, put some glue stick on it and then folded it around the mast. And the glue has stiffened it so it looks like it's flapping in the breeze. Well done, that's day four finished, one day left. Welcome to day five of my boat craft. So what is our boat missing? I think it just needs a little person in it. So we're going to make a person today and then we're going to sail our boat. 
Now to make our purse, I'm going to make a peg person, so you need a peg like this. And I, you can have it a taller person. I've actually cut the legs off mine because mine's going to be a little girl. And then you need some fabrics. And then you need something for the hair. I've just got some wool, um, blue tack glue. And to make the face, I'm going to use Sharpie or permanent markers. So you might need a grown up for this bit because our boat's really going to go in the water. So don't use felt it because it will wash off the splash gets on it. Okay, come on, let's see what we have to do. So I'm holding my person, this is the front, and I'm going to put about halfway down the head, I'm going to put two little eyes. Just be nice and simple with this, because if you overthink it, then you end up with really big eyes that look funny. I'm just going to miss the nose out, because they're hard to draw. And just put a little tiny mouth in it. There you go. Obviously, if you want to paint it, you could change the skin colour or anything like this, but this is a, just a plain wooden peg. Now we're going to put some hair... And I've got some black wool because my um, little girl is going to look like my little, my own little girl. My peg little girl is going to look like my real little girl. So I'm going to give her some long black hair. I'm going to get the wool and I'm going to wrap it round and round my hand to make a kind of thick. There you go. And when you've got it like that, put it on your table and snip it. And then you want to tie a bit round the middle of your hair like that. This is going to be the middle of your hair. Okay, so you've got a, almost like a bow of, this is just the quickest way. And I'm going to put some glue on my little peg dolly's head. Just where you want it to go obviously so down the sides and the back and the top and then get your hair and put it on now if you want to use PVA it will stick a bit better but it will take longer to dry obviously and then you just need to once you've stuck it on you need to just give her a haircut so she's got with your scissors Give my girl a little bit of a haircut and my glue stick the hair kept falling off so what I've done is I've just put a little tiny bit of double-sided tape on the top of her head to help hold it on so you might need to do that depending on how good your glue is or PVA will work you just have to leave it to dry that's fine and then trim her obviously if you want to do a boy's hair um, you can just cut it much much shorter and then if you want you could put it in bunches or anything there's my little girl now the quickest way to dress her is just to cut a little bit of fabric and exactly how we made the flags stick it around her body so I'm just going to cut a bit and then apply the glue to the fabric rather than to the body because that will make it all stick round onto itself because you're going to fold it round and round her body like that There you go. There she is in a little dress. And if you want to use two different bits of fabric, you could use another little strip here. Maybe give her some jeans to wear. You're not going to need very much. Same thing, just put the glue onto the fabric. And then wrap it around the body. There you go. Can't even see her feet at all. There's our little person. Now, to put her in the boat, we're going to just use some blue tack or probably even plaster seam would do. Put it onto the bottom. And we're going to put her in our boat. She's looking great, isn't she? Oh, there's our little girl in her boat. Should we go and sail her and check that this ship is watertight? Come on then, let's find some water. Okay, there we go. There she sails. She looks fantastic, doesn't she? And perfectly watertight. Super craft, everybody. Well done.